Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazar, and today is 5th of May 2022. Right now, I am with the 11 Cambridge class, and the subject we are studying is D Maths 4024. Today, we have set our hearts to solve a paper one. We have selected October, November 2019 1 1 paper. This paper one belongs from the zone one or the variant one. In this video, we are going to solve the question number one to question number 14. And the rest of the paper we will solve in another video. So let's start today's paper. Okay, so on your screen. October, November 2019, 1-1 one, one paper. The time allowed is two hours, calculator is not allowed. Okay, so the first question coming up on your screen is three multiply one whole four by seven. So you have to multiply these two numbers and you can say they are fractions. So four seven ones are seven, seven plus four will be 11 by seven. So three multiply 11 by seven. So. On your screen, you can see three multiply 11 by seven. Numerator multiplies with the numerator. Denominator multiplies with the denominator. So you will have 33 by seven, which will be four whole five by seven. Four whole five by seven. Four whole five by seven is the right answer, sir. Okay. So the B part, 1.3 multiply 0 0.3. The strategy is simple. This will be 13 by 10 multiply three by 10. You remove the decimal. So numerator multiplies with the numerator, denominator multiplies with the denominator. So let me show you. So 13 by 10 multiplied 3 by 10, that will be 39 by 100. So adjust the decimal. So the final answer will be 0 0.39. 0 0.39. Our answer is right, sir. Okay. Question number two showing up on your screen. He says the scatter diagram shows the marks that 12 students each obtained in test A and test B. Give a reason why it is not appropriate to draw a line of the best fit. If you look at this, the scatter diagram has really scattered. Uh, there is no correlation. So that's why we cannot draw a line of best fit because there is no co correlation. They are not going in a pattern. So because there's no correlation uh, between the two quantities, that's why. So there is no correlation between the two sets of marks. That's why you cannot draw the line of the best fit. So I can show you the marking scheme. There is no correlation between the two sets of marks. Okay. Here we go. Ah, the diagram shows the net of a solid. Okay, so this is the net of the solid, like uh, a box and you can fold its arms and this will be converted into a pyramid. What is the special mathematical name of the solid? The special name of this solid is square based pyramid. And then he says for this solid, write down the number of vertices. So the number of vertices will be how much? It will be a square based pyramid. This will be the shape. How many vertices? One, two, three, four, and five. So there will be five vertices. So let's check. Square base pyramid and five vertices. Okay. Here we have to factorize one minus 36 P squared. These are two perfect squares with a negative between them. So one is one square and 36 P squared, that will be six P squared. So here on your screen, one minus 36 P square, that will be one square minus six P whole square. So you have two perfect square and negative between them. So you, you can, it's like A square minus B square and that is equals to A plus B into A minus B. So it will be A plus six P into A minus six P. So that is our answer. So let's check. One minus six P plus one plus six P. Okay, so the next question. It's a two mark question, factorize. It says four X plus three Y plus X Y plus 12. If you pay a little attention, you will know we have to re rearrange it. So four X plus 12, 
plus x y plus three y, and then you will be able to solve it. So you see, I have rearranged it. Four x plus twelve plus x y plus three y. So here the four is common, so x plus three is left. From here y is common, so you are left with x plus three. This x plus three bracket in both the terms is common, and then you will left with the four plus y. So x plus three into four plus y. So let's check the answer. Our answer is right, sir. Okay, so let's move to the next question. The next question is question number five. He says the television program is two hours, 40 minutes long. It starts at 22.45. At what time does it finish? Okay. So we know the start time, that's 22.45. The program is of uh, uh, two hours and 40 minutes. So add it. So you will have 85 minutes and 24 hours. And 85 minutes do not exist. So from here, take 60 minutes and add them in one hour, in the hour, sorry. And 60 minutes mean one hour. So 25, 20, 25, 25. And the 25 hours do not exist. It means you have gone into the next day. So from 25 subtract 24, so you will get 125. That means 1.25 a.m. in the next day. 1.25 in the next day. Okay. Hopefully you understand. Let's check the answer. 1.25, 1.25, yeah, that's, that's the right answer, sir. The program contains eight advertisement breaks, each of which lasts for uh, three minutes. Find the fraction of the two hour 40 minutes that is taken by advertisement. Give your answer in its simplest form. Okay, so we know that eight advertisements are there. And you know, the time for advertisements will be eight multiplied three and that will be 24 minutes. Program is two hours and 40 minutes, which means two multiplied 60 plus 40, 120 plus 40, 160 minutes. The program is 160 minutes and there are 24 minutes ads. So what fraction of the time of the program is ads? That will be the advertisement time divided by the total time. That will be 24 divided by 160. So you cancel it with the four, so it is six by 40. I cancel it with the two, you get three by 20. So three by 20 is the right answer, sir. Let's check the marking scheme. Three by 20 is the right answer. Okay. Then he says, write these values in order starting with the smallest. Okay, so this is one by 30. This will be three by 100. This will be one by 10. This is five by 100. This is two by 25. So I, the trick with which I work is that I make their denominator same. For example, here, very easily, you can make all the denominators. Uh, you can make all the denominators equals to 300. So for example, the first one is one by 30. So multiply numerator, denominator, both with the 10. So you get 10 by 300. 0 0.03, which means three by 100. So multiply up, down uh, with the three. You get nine by 300. We have one by 10 uh, multiplied with the 30 upstairs, downstairs. So you get 30 by 300. Five person means five by 100. Then multiplied with the three numerator, denominator, both multiplied with the three. So you get 15 by 300. Then you have two by 25, so multiply with the uh, with the 12. So you will have uh, 24 by numerator, denominator, both are multiplied with the 12. So you get 24 by 300. You see the basic idea is I made the denominator same. Now I can easily compare them. The whoever has the smallest numerator, that is the smallest fraction. So you see, I put A, B, C to make that thing. Here, this is the smallest, A, then this, B, then this one, C, then this one, D, and at the last, this one. So I will write them in this order, and I will write them the, the original ones. So 0 0.03, and then 1 by 30, then 5%, then 2 by 25, then 1 by 10. So let's check. 
the answer. Our answer is right. Okay. He says y is directly proportional to x. When x equals to four, y is equals to t. Find the x in terms of t when the y equals to two. Okay, it's a two marks question. So let's see, very simple. Okay, here we go. Y is directly proportional to x, so y is equals to kx. Y value is t when the x value is four, so y, t is equals to k, k into four. So the value of the k will be t by four. From here you can say, from here I can say the value of the, uh, you know, k will be t by four. Then he says I made the y two, so what will be the value of the x in terms of t, okay? In the place of x put two and make this x alone, two by k. So the k value from here is t by four. So this fraction will go up and it will uh, flip and reciprocate. So two into four, eight divided by t. So eight divided by t is the answer. Question number seven, eight divided by t is the right answer, sir. Eight divided by t is the right answer, sir. <clears throat> question number, and this is eight, two marks question. By writing each number correct to one significant figure, estimate the values of, this is 59.84c squared, so I will make it 60 squared. 20.13, I will write it as 20, then you have multiply 0 0.9, 0 0.24, I will write it as 0 0.9. And then I will be able to do the calculation. Okay. So 60 squared divided by 20 divided by 0 0.9, so you will have 3,600 multiply 10. I removed the decimal of 0 0.9. So that's why upstairs I will write 10. So 3,600 multiplied 10 divided by 20 divided by nine. So you will have 400 divided by two and that will be 200. So how uh, nine, nine canceled with this. So 400, zero, zero gone. So 400 by two and the 200 is the final answer. So let's check. 200 is the final answer, sir. Question number eight is right. Okay, so we are going to the next question. The next question is of three marks. And it's the simultaneous equation. Simul Solve this simultaneous equation. Very simple. I will make Y same and then I will subtract them. Okay. So for that purpose, the second equation will be multiplied with the two. So x plus four y minus two bracket x plus two y equals to one minus two into eight. I'm using the horizontal method. So x plus four y is equals to minus six x minus four y equals to one minus 16. This and this will be gone. So you will have minus x minus five x equals to minus 15. Minus minus gone 15 divided by five it will be three. So the value of the x is three. Then put the value of the x three in the first equation. So x plus four y equals to one. So in the place of x, I will substitute three. So three plus four y equals to one. So four y is equals to one minus three. So four y will be minus two. So y will be minus two by four. So the y will be equals to minus one by two. So the value of the x is three and the value of the y is minus one by two. Let's check. So our answer is right. He says, Amir buys a camera for $250 and sells it for $200. Calculate his percentage loss. He bought the cost price is $250. The sale price is $200. So his percentage loss can be found by, first of all, we need to calculate what is the loss. The loss is the cost price minus the sale price. And then the percentage loss is the loss divided by the cost price multiplied by 100. So that's the strategy. Let me show you how this is done. Okay, so 
the cost price is $250, sale price is $200. The loss is cost price minus the sale price. $250 minus $200, that will be $50. Percentage loss is loss divided by cost price multiply 100. So it will be 50 divided by 250 multiply 100. So it will be 20% loss. It will be 20% loss. So let's check question number 10 a part 20 is the right answer sir okay so next part mira invests some money at a rate of two percent per year simple interest how many years does it take for her investment to double in value okay so for example her principal the money he invested she invested sorry and that is p the rate is two percent the time we don't know we want to find out the amount at the end she she she, she, she wants to get is double so the amount at the end will be 2p okay double so how much time it will take so you know the amount is equals to the you know the formula is uh, amount is equals to principal plus the interest so the amount we want at the end is 2p so 2p is equals to p plus prt by 100 that's the formula so bring that P to the other side, to the left side. So 2P minus P is equals to P R in the R. R is 2%. Time is question divided by 100. So you will have P equals to P T by 50. So the um, cross multiplier. So you have 50 P equals to P T. P P P P P will be canceled. So you will have 50 equals to T. So T is equals to 50 years. So in 50 years, your investment in investment will become double. Let's check, 50% is the right answer, sir. Okay. Then we have, yeah, here we have seven minus three bracket, 5K minus two bracket close, simplify. A very simple and a straightforward question. You just have to open that bracket. So you will have seven minus three bracket 5K minus two bracket close, seven minus 15K plus six. So it will be seven plus six is 13. So 13 minus 15K, simple. So let's check 11 A part, 13 minus 15K. So the, our answer is right, sir. Okay, so question number 11, it's B part, and it's a two marks question. He says, solve the following equation. So we will factorize it. So first of all, I will take the X common. And then once I have factorized it, then it will be very easy to solve. Five X squared minus three X is equal to zero, take X common. So you will have X bracket five X minus three bracket close equal to zero. So these two are multiplying, the answer is zero. So it, yeah, it means either the first means the X is zero or the five X minus three bracket is zero. So we'll make both of them equals to zero. So you will have X equals to zero. And when you make five X minus three equals to zero, take this three to the other side. Five X is equals to three. So X is equals to three by five. So there are two values of X, zero and three by five. Let's check. Zero and three by five is the right answer, sir. Okay, so we are going to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is on the indices. He says evaluate three raised to the power minus two multiply three raised to the power four. The bases are same. So you can directly add the powers. So when you add four, four and minus two with each other, you will get two. So three raised to the power two, and that will be nine. So the answer will be nine. Let me show you my working. So here you can see you multiply them, you get four raised to three raised to power four minus two, three raised to power two, and that's nine. So our answer is nine. Question number 12A part, the answer is nine. So our answer is right. Okay, the B part, question number 12B part. It says three minus three raised to power zero. Anything raised to power zero means one. So it will be three minus one, which will be two. So let me show you the solution. Okay, three minus three square, uh, three raised to zero, and three minus, three raised to zero means one. Three minus one will be two. 
So question number 12, B part, the answer is two. So our answer is right. Okay, so we are going to the next part, C part. It says y raised to power one by two multiplied by four, y raised to power one by four. The coefficient multiplies with the coefficient, so that the answer will be four. And because both the bases are same and their powers, they're multiplying, so the powers will be added. So y raised to power one by two plus one by four. So when you will add their powers, okay, so here you can see four y raised to power one by two plus one by four, and their LCM will be four, so two plus one. So that will be three by four. So four y raised to power three by four. So this is how you multiply. The powers were in fractions, so you added them because they were fractions, so we have to take the LCM. Simply the powers have been added. One by two plus one by four, and answer is three by four. I'm talking about the power. Okay. So four y raised to three by four. If it's not visible, I can show you. Three by four is the right answer, sir. Okay, so let's 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 move to the next part. Next part is the question number 13. He says, write the number. 0 0.00023 in the standard form. So I will move this decimal one, two, and three, and four, four steps to the left, uh, to the right, sorry. So it will become 2.3 raised to power, 2.3 into 10 raised to power minus four. So this is my answer, 2.3 into 10 to power minus four. So let's check. Check from the marking scheme, 2.3 into 10 to power minus four is the right answer, sir. So our answer is right. Okay, so the next part. Here we have B part. It will be of how much marks? Sorry. It is of two marks. Okay. Evaluate 8 expo 9 minus 9 expo 8. So giving your answer in the standard form. Very simple strategy. Here you have. So I will take one 10 from here, give it to this eight. It will become 80 into 10 power eight. I made the power same. So I will take this 10 is power eight common. So here you are left with 80 minus nine, 71 into 10 is power eight. So for standard form, I will, the decimal is here. I will move it here because this number should be less than 10 more than one. 7.1 into 10 power nine. 7.1 into 10 is to power nine is the right answer, sir. So let's confirm from the marking scheme. 7.1 into 9 is the right answer, sir. Okay. Question number 14, P values two raised to power three into three into five square. Q is equals to two into three square into five. Find the highest common factor of the P and the Q. When we take the HCF, uh, we take uh, only those factors which are common in both of them. And if a factor is common, we take the its least power. Its least power is taken in the SCF. So let me show you. Here we go. So here you see we want to find the SCF. So two is common, but we take the smallest power. Here three is common, but we will take the smaller power. Here five is common, but we'll take the smaller power. So two fives are 10, 10 threes are 30. So the HCF is 30. Let's confirm. Yes, sir. Question number 14, 30 is the right answer. Okay. Then they want us to find out the lowest common multiple LCM of the P, Q, and 21. Give your answer as the product of the prime factors. Okay. So when you find the LCM, we write them in their prime factors and we take the, the factors which are common to all of them. Uh, we take them once and we use their highest power. And with the factors which are not common, they are also taken. Let me show you. <clears throat> so here we have P, Q, and 21. These are the prime factors of 21. So you see the two is common. So but I will take the larger power, largest power here. Three is common, but I will take the largest power. Five is common, so I will take the largest power. And seven is not common, 
that will also be taken. In the LCM, we take all the factors, common and even those factors which are not common. But we take the common ones, I, we take their largest power. So two raised power three into three square into five square into seven. They said, give the answer in the form of the prime factor. So that's the answer, sir. Two cubed, three square, five square, and two seven. That is right answer, sir. Okay. He says, uh, it's a one mark question. He says, find the smallest integer n such that the pn is a square number. pn is a square number. Uh, you know, in the square number, all the factors have even power, okay? If some factor do not have even power, uh, the n will be such numbers which will make all the factors have even power. For example, you have two pn, p is two raised by three into three into five square into n. n, now what will be the value of the n? n will be such that it will make all these factors raised to power something even. So like you have two raised by three, so the n must be, one must have two. So, so the two raised by four can be formed. You have three raised by one, so n must be have one more three so that the three square can be formed. Five square is already a square number. So the value of the n should be two into three and that will be six. So let's check. Six is the right answer, sir. So uh, my dear students, in this uh, session, in this video, we have solved October, November, 2019 paper, DMAS 402411 paper. And in this video, we have solved uh, from question number one to question number 40. The rest of the questions are from question number 15 to I think question number uh, 24 or 25, we will do in the next video. I hope that this video will be helpful to you. If you find this video interesting and helpful, please share the link of this video with your class fellows and with your junior students. Share the link of this video onto your Facebook account, Instagram account, and Twitter accounts. Also like this video. Also feel free to comment on this video and keep praying for us because it's a blessing for me to be able to teach you online. So thank you very much. Have a good day. God bless you all.